So today we're looking at how to actually present the slides. We've already had an overview of what everything is in OpenSong. So if you haven't seen that and that would be useful, feel free to go back and look over that. Or if anything I'm talking about doesn't make sense, you think, what's that button, What what's all of this? That might be where you find the answers to that. And also we're not looking about putting slides together or creating presentations. Um, this is just imagine you turn up on a Sabbath morning at church and it's already been set up by somebody else and you just need to send it to the projector basically. So that's what we're going to be looking at and some other things we will look at, you know, present, um, doing things in more detail, setting things up, we'll look at later. So first of all, you need to be able to get to the right um, set. So we're on the example one now and we just click this button here and choose the one we want. This is um, a genuine one taken from a, a recent service. And so we can have a quick look at what's happening in our in our set. So this is um, the content from Sabbath School, which is everything before the yellow line and everything after the yellow line is set up for the divine service and you can actually see things are color coded so that helps you know what kind of content you've got um things that are sort of this beigey peach color are things that have been custom set up so this is an item that has one or more slides that have been set up manually they've been named manually if needed and um the content's just been typed in and so the same would go for these or specifically you can see the Sabbath school items where you get those three lines. That means these three things will all come up on three different slides. They're not all going to go on the screen at once. So that's an idea of what our content is. Then these sorts of lilac-y ones are songs. You can see that you can see the content, but it's grayed out because we can't edit it because the songs are actually um, edited in song mode. So this is just for us to see what it's going to look like. But if we don't like it, that would be something else to make changes um, but we can see what's coming that way and these event posters that are going to go up um, on a loop in between the two services we can see the images um, and we can see that they're auto advancing every seven seconds and that um, they're on a loop so there we've just got an overview of what we're looking at and what's going into our um our set our presentations but to actually present them um, which is what we want to do, we need to go to present. Um, and you may be prompted to save it if this is greyed out, then there aren't any unsaved changes. But if there are, you can just click that before you present. But if you try to present without having saved it, it's going to prompt you to save anyway. So we click on present and when you're in an actual church setting with a projector connected, you'll get the dual screen option, um, which is what you'll want. Um, we're going to do preview dual screen because I haven't got an external monitor. And here we see what would be going to the projector and what would be on our screen in our presentation helper. So the basic thing that we have in common with most presentation software is we can scroll through our screens one at a time by pressing the up and down arrows. So in the wonderful scenario where everything is completely linear and you go through everything exactly as it is in your setup, you would just basically be pressing down, down, down as you go through the songs, as you go to the next item, etc. Um, the other thing you can do, which is likely going to be coming in useful, is jump between things. Um, so you can see these blank white lines in between each item. There aren't any blank lines here, but the blank lines here come in between each item and that will just give you a blank slide with the background but no content on it, which can be um, very useful for not having any change except for removing the words. The other thing it allows you to do, OpenSong will let you jump in between items or go straight to the end or beginning of an item from the middle of it. So if we're singing this song and we're right in the middle of it and then it's time to stop, um, it was an introit and the um, platform parties arrived or for whatever reason we can use the right and left arrows to go straight to the blank slides in between items like so and also those left and right item, um, buttons then let us jump in between so now I'm jumping back with the left arrow and I've gone back to the beginning I'm jumping with the right arrow now and I'm going down and you can see that the preview of what's coming next is changing as I'm jumping down. 
but what is being shown on the screen isn't changing. So you don't have, for example, if you start with the welcome and then they go straight into the prayer, you don't have that scenario of having to scroll through all the songs and everybody sees the you know they're seeing behind the scenes of you crazily running through obviously you can scroll and click as well because you've got your mouse um, or if you're lost and you want to see where you are you can use the right and left arrows if the mouse isn't an option for whatever reason um, and the only time that that screen will change unless there are some scenarios where you might get changes to how the screen looks but that's a bit it's not something we really will need to worry about, at least for now. Um, the only time that that may change is if you're coming um, either just before, or in this case, just after um, a scripture, then you'll get the background that went with the scripture slide. And so that's the only time they might see a random something flashing on the screen if you're jumping between. So those are your main things to present. We'll generally just be going up and down, scrolling and clicking on what you need, or... Um, using right and left to jump between or to jump straight to the beginning or end when you're in the middle to be nearer to wherever you want to be next. And there are some other features that can be useful um, and you do have handy hints as to what those are and how to use them here. Um, I'll start with these this list of um, shortcuts for the keys. So we've sp talked about down and up for next and previous slide, right and left to jump between sections or between items. And then um, and there's some other shortcuts. What you might find that we sometimes find useful is jumping to verses. You sometimes get worship leaders saying, let's go straight to verse four. Um, so let's take a good example of a song that we use that for. So we could be on verse one and we're going to wrap up sooner and they say verse four. You can do the numbers um, and I'll just click four and it will jump to verse four. And likewise, you can press C and it will jump to the chorus. Isn't really needed where it's presented with the chorus in between every verse. Sometimes it's usually accidentally not set up that way. And you would just have verse one, a chorus, and then verse two, three, four, five. And then you'd either have to use your mouse to jump between, or you could just press C, you know, one C, two C, three C to keep jumping back to the chorus if needed that way. So there's um, some clues as to what the keys are there. The next most useful ones that I'm going to mention are adding song and scriptures. So you may get somebody asking for any favourites or a song being announced that wasn't already in the set. And that's where you can just click on add song. And you can quickly look it up. You can type in the number if it's known and then just press add. You can see it's already highlighted on the first result for what you've typed in. You can click add and suddenly it's the next item in your um, in your presentation. This doesn't actually get sent to the presentation itself. So if you ever come out of this presentation helper and this comes off the screen, it's not going to be saved here. So you wouldn't be able to then present again and find anything you've added on the fly in there. But while you're in the presentation, it will stay there. Um, so that's finding songs on the fly. Um, and you can see in square brackets on all of these um, options, you've got the shortcut key. So if I press Q, it will bring me up the song lookup window as well. One thing to bear in mind, you can search by lyrics or by... Um, by the actual text that's in the title as well. I type because it's offering me because he lives first of all, as well as by number. Um, but bear in mind that it will only give you the first result that matches what you're looking for. So if, for example, I'm looking for it is well, it's giving me 530 it is well, the one that's saved under the, the Seventh-day Adventist hymnal numbers. But they're actually, if I scroll down past that to the songs that are just saved generally, there are actually two entries for it is well um, here. And it's not giving me those because it just gave me the first result that matched what I've typed. Um, so you may sometimes have to still scroll to look for something or be intelligent about how you're searching for it. So for example, if I, um, I'm just going to type Lord, I'm just going to get one praise to the Lord is in there. There's so many songs that have Lord. So I might want to try and type the whole thing if I'm quite confident that that's exactly how the, the song is saved, but that's finding songs. 
Um, we do have on in the Carter Knoll database, we do have the entire Seventh Day Adventist hymnal and quite a few other songs. They may not all be formatted right. Some of them may have what I was mentioning earlier where the chorus hasn't been put in between each verse, so watch out for that. There may be spelling mistakes, etc. Um, but all the songs are at least there, or should be at least there. So we'll cancel that. Likewise, you can look for a scripture and the shortcut key is an S. So if a preacher suddenly says, or somebody suddenly asks for something to be read or to be put on the screen, um, you just press S and you get this scripture lookup um, window. So let's just do Genesis 7 verse 4 to 10. So there's the verse that we start from, the Old Testament books, New Testament books, chapter, verse we start from, verse we're going to. You're probably not going to want to change too many things here if you're doing it on the fly. So I'll mention all of this stuff more when we look at creating slides. Um, but what it, you may want to do is actually search, um, just type in if it's quicker, you know, Gen 1 verse 1. You can type that in here and then click look up and it will find it that way as well. And your two options are either just to put it on the screen right now, which is display now. And you can see the first part of it's coming up on there. And suddenly this windows, this um, next arrow is available for me to click to the next one. And now the previous arrow is now enabled as well to go back to the beginning as I scroll through um, that whole text till I get to the end. So display now is an option that will just put it straight on the screen but when you click done it's completely gone it's not even saved it to your presentation helper if we go to let's try doing that this way exodus 2 verse 3 to 12 for example look that up and it's jumped straight to what i've chosen if i click add instead and then done it's now on my screen so it's still, just like with the songs, adding songs on the fly, it's not been saved to our base presentation. When we exit from presenting it, it's not going to be saved there. But the whole time that I'm in this presentation, it's it's there. Um, so, for example, if it's, a, if it's a scripture reading and you think it's, or you can tell from the way someone's mentioning it, they might keep referring back to it, then you might choose to add it rather than just display now so you don't have to search for it again if they ask you to go back or it looks like it would be sensible to go back at any time. Um, so yeah, those, if you think it would be useful to change some of those options that I didn't look at, once that next video is up about creating slides, I'll try and put chapters in so you can go straight to the bit about what all those things do. But to be honest, they're pretty self-explanatory as you've seen and a lot of playing around might make that easier. So if you've got the time to change those, you've probably got that option too. Um, the other main thing on here is you can add an alert. So I'm just going to put hi. And so that's where you might put an announcement, something like, you know, would car registration, blah, 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 please move. Obviously keep that as short as possible so it can take up as little space as possible from the screen. But it's a quick way of just alerting your congregation to something and to quit it. I'm going to do the shortcut key of A as it says in the instructions in the window, just to clear it, leave it blank and it's gone. These um, modes up the top are quite useful if you ever need to change what's on the screen relevant to what's actually being presented. For example, if you need to scroll through and look for something and do a lot of jigging about when actually, you know, you might be in the, um, you might be in say this title screen telling you what the sermon is and who's who's preaching that wasn't the actual preacher but this was a, a real <laughs> sermon i decided for privacy not to put the real sir the real preacher up um, but if that's on there you don't then you suddenly need to check for something or check you've check you've got the lyrics right for the closing song um, but you don't want to suddenly flash it on the screen for example or come out of it and the screen suddenly goes um, you've come out of the presentation or lost some things you put on the fly that you might want to keep. This is where these modes can come in useful. Again, you've got the shortcut keys. Black does it was what it says on the tin. The audience will suddenly see a black screen and you'll see that you're in black mode 
um, because of this um, black box around and diagonal line through letting you know which mode you're in and this is obviously highlighted white again that's obvious what it does this will update hidden will let's go back to normal hidden will take off any content from the screen but leave the background so these could be useful for different reasons. Logo will put a logo that you've set. It's all default is just the open song logo, but you could put your church's logo, Sunday Adventist logo, your AY logo, whatever you want could come on the screen there. And if I go back to normal, um, frozen will keep what's on the screen the same while you click through everything else. Um, so those can be useful for, for different scenarios, as you can imagine. And then when you click normal, it will always go back to what's currently actually being presented, not what was being seen there. So you won't jump to match what they will are seeing. So if you want that to then be back to where it was, you'd obviously have to go back to this slide before you click normal. Otherwise, it's going to change. So that's what the modes do. Um, and the only other thing I was going to show you is what happens. We looked earlier at these um, this image item that I mentioned as we looked on the side of the the window had um, was set to loop and was set to auto advance so this is what that looks like we've got event posters some of these are the are in the past now but things that we're displaying on a loop just as sort of announcements locally or posters that have been sent in from other areas or from the conference um, so those can just go on a loop during the, the break between the two services and we can just leave them running. Um, and if I click here, you'll see after it auto advances, you can see here it's got loop in brackets that lets you know it's going to go back to the beginning. So the minute this is our next slide, we're now on it. Next slide should be blank, but actually when the seven seconds is up, it's going to go back to the beginning. So those are the only things to note. Obviously, not all images will do that. It will be if it's been set to do that. But that's something to be aware that could be happening. And yep, press escape or click this to come out of your presentation at any point. And I think that's um, plenty <laughs> about um, presenting with OpenSong.